Let's focus on the cron facility, the scheduling facility. Now that we've looked at YUM as well as RPM. So cron features a scheduler. And a scheduler within an OS environment provides the ability to execute commands at a desired schedule. Now cron follows some rules. When you create an entry, the rules are based on times. And the times are governed by the various columns that are or that precede the command that is to execute. And they include the minute, which can be 0 through 59, meaning the process can execute either at the top of the hour or before the top of the next hour or any minute between the two. So between the top and the minute before the top of the subsequent hour. The second column in the rule that you create or the cron entry, so rules will also reference as cron entry or cron entries, pertains to the hour of the day that the process is to execute, which can be one of 0 through 23 and can be multiple options. So if you'd like a process to run, let's say, for example, at midnight, then 2 a.m., and then 6 a.m., you could indicate 0, 2, 6, and cron would run the process on those hours. The hour column is followed immediately by the day of the month, or DOM, which is one of 1 through 31, depending on the month, of course. And again, just like the other fields, can be combined to represent multiple days of the month, such as the 1st, the 15th, the 19th, and the 24th. After the day of the month is the month. This influences the months in which the process, month or months in which the process will execute, 1 through 12. So if you'd like a process to execute all months, you could indir indicate asterisk or specific months, such as January and February, 1, 2, or 1 through 2. And the fifth column is a day of the week, or DOW which you can generally indicate as the three-letter prefix such as Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc., or 0 through 7, with 0 and 7 representing Sunday, which means 1 through 6 represents Monday through Saturday. So again, cron is a scheduler, and it accepts rules in various files that it processes, and the rules should contain the time that the process should execute, and the final column, the fifth or the sixth column, contains the command to execute, which can be a shell script, Perl script, etc. Now let's take a look from the shell at how cron is implemented. An RPM query cron reveals that it's not installed. Query all grep i cron reveals that it's indeed installed. But instead of as cron, it's called vixie dash cron. RPM query list vixie cron is actually split out into multiple packages, vixie cron and cron tabs. But vixie dash cron reveals the included items, including etc cron dot d, which is a container for cron entries, a PAM entry for authentication, an initialization entry so that the process can be started whenever the system starts or whenever the system enters the or a run level that cron should execute in, a sysconfig entry which influences startup as well, cron tab which is the program which allows you to maintain a user's cron tab. The main daemon itself, cron D, and in fact, if you PSEF grep 
cron D, you'll see that's running. It's always running, by the way. And documentation as well as var spool cron, where you'll find individual user cron items. So in addition to being a scheduler and accepting rules, cron wakes up every minute in search of programs to execute. And it checks the various schedules that it is responsible for. And if it finds a process or more that need to be executed at the current minute when it wakes up, it will execute the process or processes. So it wakes up every single minute and it searches various places. Now what are those places? We see etc cron.d as well as var spool cron. Well, in etc on a Red Hat system, you've got multiple cron entries. Let's just copy and paste these items and discuss them briefly in our text file. So it reads cron entries or cron tabs from multiple files. And they're primarily located beneath etc and they resemble or they are these files. Items beneath cron.d will be included. So for example, let's just take a brief look at cron.d. It's empty. But if you insert a file, an entry with a schedule, it'll be executed according to schedule. cron.deny. That's less etc cron.deny. Let's see if it even exists, and it does. Any user placed in this file will be denied access to execute cron. So let's just note denies cron execution by user. cron.monthly runs jobs monthly. And let's just take a brief look at the cron.monthly directory to see what's there. And we see an entry for anacron, which is a process that covers for cron in the event that cron is unable to run processes on your computer because it's been powered off for some amount of time. So it runs jobs monthly. Whereas cron.weekly runs jobs weekly. Let's take a brief look at a default Red Hat installation to see what's in here. Here we see anacron once again as well as make what is, which is another job. And if we examine the contents of cron.weekly make what is, for example, you'll see that this entry is a bash shell script with a description of what it does. And if we examine anacron, or zero anacron, and zero is to ensure that it runs first, it too is a script, a bash shell script, which will run items that were not executed. Cron.daily is similar. Items that are to be executed daily will run if they are in the daily directory. And a brief look at the default location will indicate what runs daily on the system. Entries for cups, log rotate, perhaps log rotate is the most important process. That's less cron.daily log rotate, which we have yet to look at. And on a daily basis, when cron executes the daily jobs, one of them will be the log rotate package, which processes a configuration file from ETC. And it makes sure that it logs the item if the exit status is not zero. In other words, if a failure to rotate the file occurs, or files occur, then the logger is called and an appropriate entry will be log, related to log rotate that you can find in the messages file. cron.hourly runs jobs hourly. Let's see if there are any entries. And there are none. And then there's a main cron tab file. This file contains general schedules, general system schedules. So contains system-wide schedules. It is also a place where you may place cron entries for, let's say, tasks that you'd like to run that you'd normally assign to root. 
just to keep it in a centralized place. We look at cron tab and we see it includes a few defaults for shell, path, mail to and home. So whenever these items run, they will include or run the bash shell with the following path, messages, success or failure messages will be sent to root, and the home directory is the root of the file system. After that, we see entries for hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly, the items that we just completed talking.